one of South Africa's biggest groups. Sorry, scratch that. One of Africa's biggest groups, Mafiki Zolo, in Nairobi. Hi. Welcome to Nairobi. Thank you. How are you guys doing? We're doing great. Uh, we're very excited <laughs> to be back in Nairobi. Nairobi loves you so much. You guys come back here, come here a few times and every time. This time at the Koroga Festival, it sold out 10 days before the actual event. How crazy is that? We were actually surprised. Um, we saw on Instagram because yes. we do follow, you know, and um, when we saw like 80% sold. You're like, oh, wow. 90% sold. <laughs> <laughs> now, sold out, you know. We're very excited. And another thing why we're excited is that uh, we are with our fellow you know, South African uh, brothers, um, Uhuru, yes. uh, who are performing with us. You know, uh, the nicest things that we work with Uhuru, they they did most of our stuff on, on, on um, our reunited album. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we're very close with them. So it's, it's, it's kind of cool. We've been talking like, ah, we'll meet up. Yeah, no, we'll see you guys there when we get there. You know, so we haven't seen them today, but uh, hopefully uh, because we only came, you know, early this morning. You basically then, just yeah, came in from the know, airport and, and yeah. you're already here. Yeah. I think what's nice also about traveling with your producers is um, the fact that anything is possible, anything can happen. Right. You know, we might wake up and we've got a song with Saudi yeah. Solo, we've got a song with, you know, another Kenyan artist. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. um, we, we told the guys to bring the stuff with them so that, you know, if, maybe if inspiration after strikes. Exactly. Awesome. Exactly. <laughs> and Lantla, are you matching your shades with your entire outfit? <laughs> yes. You and my neck piece, and, and my <laughs> shirt underneath, and my coat on top, you don't, know. Don't go further. And, a <laughs> 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 and my ring also, oh, you wow. know, so I kind of... <laughs> you do look fabulous. Thank you. <laughs> because you're not just a musician, you're a fashion icon. Is that so much pressure? Like, you, you can't just step out and go to the supermarket looking drab. You know what, I, um, it's, it's like... Being a musician, when you get on stage, you want to give your best mm -hmm. and you want people to believe in you in terms of, you know, um, your vocal ability and all of that. It's the same. I've got a fashion label and, um, you know, I try by all means because, you know, uh, the clothes are my business as well, aside from music. I try by all means that when I go out, you know, people have to see, people have to believe in the brand, you know, that I'm selling and, and, and. That's why it's it's no pressure though, at all because right. I love I love looking good you know that's how my mama raised me that when you step out the house you gotta look good so um, it, it, it's fun putting clothes together and matching and mismatching sometimes right. outfits yeah okay Theo that neck that neck piece it, it's quite a statement isn't it <laughs> exactly <laughs> um, image is very important I would say for mm -hmm. for every artist and. Actually, everyone who's, who's, who's in this industry or another industry, um, I always say to people that, um, or I have a believing that, you know, um, looking good makes you feel good. You know, once you're there and you're looking at yourself in your mirror and say like, ah, I look good. <laughs> you know, you got that feeling that like you can go out, you know what I mean? So um, I think for, for everyone, more especially for us in the industry, that, um, you know, we need to respect uh, uh, the kind of work that we do. Um, on and off stage, it's very important that we look good, you know. And I think um, for everyone, you know, just just dress up a bit and, you know, spoil yourself once in a while and look pashash. And even for performances, yeah. mm -hmm. people always look out, you know, uh, look out, um, uh, uh, look forward to seeing what we're wearing on stage, yes, yeah. looking for what to sing the dance routines yeah. and you know the songs so it's it's a combination of the three yeah. actually when we get on stage let's talk about your music yeah. kona is very popular in kenya but we have no idea what it says we have no <laughs> idea we don't know any other words we just know <laughs> kona <laughs> kona that's what we wait for so now y'all need to tell us what, what what are the other words what do they mean okay do you want to um <laughs> no no she, she'll let you know she starts she starts the song so probably she will let you know mm -hmm. what and her part is the most complicated part, so I think she'll break it down for us. Okay, mm -hmm. basically the song is a love song. Right. And it, it's, it's kind of like a sad love song in a way because um, what I'm saying in my part, when I say, Tando, let me look up here, I'm saying, where is the love that you've, you know, that you've given to me because, uh, I mean, uh, give it back to me because you're playing around with my heart. Right. So basically that's what I'm saying and that's what the song is about. But when you're saying corner, you're saying right here. You know, uh, so bring it back right here to me, where it belongs. This so makes basically so much more that's sense. 
<laughs> That's what the song is about. This makes so much more sense. Please do that chorus okay, for can, us. Can you tell me what were you thinking we were saying? Like we uh, have no idea, but we just like the song. We like the beats. So we just like yeah. We think yeah. they're saying important things. We don't know what they are, <laughs> but we like it. <laughs> the crazy part is, is that even at home they were yes. like, what are they saying? You uh -huh. know. So it was like this crazy thing around the continent. Uh, yeah. yes. Way by even the South Africans. I mean, we singing yeah. the song in Zulu, mm -hmm. but even the South Africans were like, what are they saying? Yeah. You know. So everybody just went corner, yeah. corner. I, th like, I think it's. A, it's, 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 the, it's having fun on, on, on the studio, mm -hmm. you know, and try to come up with things that, um, you know, not really complicated, but very creative. You know, we sing it as fast as we can, right. but it's a very simple meaning, you know. But I guess it's just being artistic and being creative uh, instead of doing the regular thing. So you say, like, instead of, you know, I'll put, I'll try to put as many words as I can into one melody, yes. you know, so it's, 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 it's a creative process, you know, in terms of writing and in terms of putting it together. So I think it, we really had a great fun recording that song. And the continent yeah. had great fun listening and yeah. dancing to it. Yeah. Now that we know what it means, please do that chorus for us, because now we're paying a lot more attention. Um, which part? I can do, I can do my part, or you want to do it? Se Tando lambi ye 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 di we sele kona la poli tate kona giali funa kona la poli puma kona di we sele and everybody say sele sele ye 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 sele sele ye sele sele ye Amazing, <laughs> amazing. Do you just wake up and your sound is your 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 your, your voice is ready to go? No man, um, not me. <laughs> not, not me. No. no, 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 no. It, it, it no, talk to me about your voice technique, actually. No, no, it it happens sometimes. I used to worry about um, you know waking up in the morning and our voices, you know, cracking in the morning. Yeah. But this kind of song is is, is a song that one enjoys, mm -hmm. and um, luckily, you know, when I sing it or when I do my part or whatever, is is. It's one of the nicest melody, and I think it's easy to come out. You know? Because typically yeah. when somebody wakes up in the morning, you're groggy and your voice is a bit off. Yes. So yes. are you trying to put uh, us on the spot to see? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you found me. Uh, uh, bastard. <laughs> I mean, I started, I started in a school choir. Mm -hmm. So, you know, even when we have, like, we have competitions in the morning, they tell us how to take care of our voices in the morning. But they would advise against singing in the morning mm -hmm. because, you know, your voice needs to open up first and you need you know and 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 then later on it's it's when it's quite warmed up and it's sounding nice then you can you can sing are there any moments for either of you when you went on stage and your voice just was not up to scratch yeah or it yeah, disappeared for any, for, yeah. for any musicians it, yeah, it happens. one has gone through that yeah. um i think i think i think uh, mostly because of um you know, performing back to back. You have a show on Friday, you have a show on Saturday, mm -hmm. you have mm -hmm. a show, you know. So it becomes quite strenuous for the voice. Um, but under normal circumstances, if, if you do like one show or if you're touring, then mm. it's just one show, maybe in a month, then it becomes okay. But once you've got shows back to back, then it becomes a big problem. And you're performing at very diverse shows. I saw you in Rwanda making the president's dance, yeah. which must have been awesome. Oh, and that was at the fun. African oh, Union. Yeah, that, that was, was that was, and you know, even even after people were saying like, our president is one of the stiffest presidents really? you can ever Jacob get. Zuma. He does not dance. He does not, you know, um, he does not, you know, the Rwandan president. They just said he. He's like that kind of a person. And they were all so surprised that, you know, he actually stood up and, and yes, came out. I, I was surprised. Danced. Looking at President Pokagami is like, oh, wow, <laughs> that's Pokagami yeah. dancing. Yeah. 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 I, I would say we, we, we are truly, you know, I would say highly favored and blessed that, you know, um, our music has touched, you know, so many people, even people in, you know, high profile, you know, um, presidents, you know, and, and we feel very honored, you know, as, 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 as Mafi Gizolo that, you know, our music is not only known where we stay in South Africa, but in the continent. And people who listen to our music are, is, is everyone, you know, to, to the presidents, to, you know, to, to ministers and to everyone on right. the street, you know. So we, we are truly humbled and, and, and we feel very, very, really, you know, highly favored, you know. Yeah. Growing up, like you did, I think it's called Kahiso. 
Cajeso, yes. Cajeso? Cajeso. Yeah. Cajeso. Yeah. yeah. I almost knew. <laughs> Did you imagine that you'd be this guy, you'd be these people who are making the continent dance, your music is had all over the place, performing um, abroad even? Uh, <laughs> you know what? I, 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 I don't think so. I, th I don't think we. You want the cover of Forbes Woman? I saw that. Congratulations. <laughs> yes, thank you, thank you. Um, I, I, I don't think we did. We knew that we wanted to be on TV and we wanted to sing, and mm -hmm. you know, but we never thought beyond that, beyond being like stars in our own country. You know, looking mm -hmm. up to people like uh, Brenda Farsi, and that's all we ever wanted to, to, to be, you know. And um, when we got into the industry, I mean, you know, it started quite slow for Mafiki Zol. I mean, before we actually broke into the market, we recorded about three albums. And only when we did the fourth album, you know, that it became big and people started noticing Mafiki. So it took us quite a while. Right. And over the years, I mean, we thought, yeah, we're doing well, but we never thought that we'd get to the part where we'll be known in the whole continent, which is amazing. Is that disappointing when you do three whole albums and you put them out? And albums take a lot of work, right? Mm. And nobody seems to appreciate it. No, no. Um, for us, I think it was, it, was, it was about passion. You know, we enjoyed what we did, you know. Um, our first album, like, like Ntanta just mentioned, first and second and third didn't do that well. Mm -hmm. But we enjoyed the experience, I would say. You know, going out there, performing, uh, seeing our fellow, you know, uh, celebrities that we always like. We, we also ran, you know, behind celebrities asking for <laughs> autographs and <laughs> taking pictures <laughs> with them. We did that as well, right. you know. So it was fun for us. Like, oh, performing next to so-and-so. Mm -hmm. Oh, can I take a picture? We did the same thing. And, and, really and, and one of yeah. our dancers, Castro, he would mm -hmm. always remind us, guys, you don't have to ask for autographs anymore now. Like, you're working with this guy. Yeah. So stop, <laughs> stop embarrassing us and asking for autographs. Yeah. You know? You're kind of important now. People know you. <laughs> yeah, but it was, it was, it was, um, you know, for us, it was a learning curve for us, you yeah. know, and um, we're grateful that uh, it taught us, you know, uh, to be, you know, uh, very humble. It also uh, taught us to, you know, um, to have the spirit of wanting to go on, you know, consistency, and we never gave up, you know. Mm -hmm. um, even though there were times whereby we felt like, uh, is this dream really coming to an end? But we were, you know, consistent in what we did, you know. And um, we learned a lot before mm. we became, you know, mm. who I we think are also, today. So also I think, it gave us time yeah. to, because when we got in, we didn't really know what kind of style we were comfortable with and what kind of style we wanted to follow. Because we went into a very big um, record company, which had your Bongo Muffin, you know, all of these other big bands um, uh, in South Africa. And we were... We didn't, we were trying to find our sound mm -hmm. and, you know, and it was difficult, you know, over the years, that's what we got to do, you know, we got to um, 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 learn about, you know, kinds of music and, and kind of like find ourselves in terms of the sound and the image that we wanted to take because, like Theo said, you know, we believe that image also plays a very important role. And when we came out, we did that, that, that 90s, 1950s sound, your Marabi sound, and uh, that's when, you know, um, I think when people started no taking notice and, you know, um, separating us from the other band and, and, and it kind of like made us unique within the stable that had so many big names. Yeah. Okay. What do you advise usually for people who want to come into the music industry and they perhaps hope to be overnight successes? You show up, your first album, your first single, and you're a big deal. Okay. You're booking shows, <laughs> you're doing all of these things. Uh, it's, 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 I think everybody wants that. Everybody wants to go in there and, and be successful. Um, um, but it doesn't happen to everyone. You know, sometimes it happens to other people. They just, um, I wouldn't know to say whether fortunate or not but mm -hmm. um with their first single um they make it you know um but then you know then they face challenges because they never you know really experienced uh, uh, the challenges you know of of not being successful you know they just went into it and they became successful then after that that the challenges that they never experienced whereas with the other people you know who really had a difficulty in getting that they will learn the experience before they get successful so i would just say um it's 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 patience you know i think patience consistency and always trying to be creative but the most important thing is always try to be unique look for the gap 
you know, don't try to do what everybody else is doing. Just try to come up with something that is different that everyone is not doing and be creative. And then you'll be, you know, you'll, t you'll, you'll be outstanding, you know. So I would just say it's a question of, mm. you know, consistency and being patient and be original. Your advice also, for upcoming musicians? I think, I think also passion plays a very important role. Once you're passionate about something, you don't even see that, you know, you've been doing something year after year and, you know, you don't even realize you're not making it. In your head, it's like, I'm doing this, you know, and, and, and that's because you've got passion for something. But if you want to, you know, go into the music industry or any other industry for the wrong reasons, then, you know, once something doesn't happen the way you want to, then you're going to go out, go look for something else. If it doesn't happen there, you're going to go, so you'll end up being all over. But once you follow something that you are passionate about, that is your drive. That's what keeps you going and, and, and you know, um, uh, makes you wake up every day is because of, you know, you've got the love for what you're doing. And... Um, you know, like for us, it didn't happen overnight, but we didn't even feel it because we're doing something that we love. We didn't even realize that it's taking long for us to break into the record camp, uh, record um, industry. Right. Yeah. You guys have bo both have families separately. Mm -hmm. How do you manage that between, you know, family connections and family commitments and your music, which is also quite demanding, I, I imagine? It's, um, it's a tough one. Um, it's a tough one because um, we always feel that um, family family is very important to us, you know. Um, but you also know that, um, you know, you've got passion for what you do. And, um, you know, trying to balance the two is, is, is quite a big challenge. How can you even take so, your kids out without people asking for pictures? <laughs> is, is that hard for you? It's, it's hard, you know, but um, how we deal with it is differently. For me, um, I always keep my family very private. Mm -hmm. um, you know, um, my family very private. No pictures of kids and everything. I think we we very very. They're not on your Instagram. Very, none of that. Yeah, very private. Mm -hmm. um, you know, with other people it's different. Um, but um, you know, it's tough. You know, when you're spending time with family and people are coming and whilst you're eating, they want to take a picture and. You know, me and Tanta, we know that type of people will right. say no. You know, it will just, you know, after Because these are your they fans, right? They're this really excited to see you. Yes, we, get, we had to be excused and then take pictures with, with, with our fans. But the, our, our families do understand the type of work that we do and uh, they fully support us. Uh, the only challenge that we had is like when we travel for a very long time, you mm -hmm. know, you get, to, you get to miss them. You, have to, you get to miss home, you know. Um, you also want to have that moment whereby you go out on holiday with your kids, with your family and have a great time like any normal person. But um, you're chasing the dream. But uh, we make sure that every opportunity that we get, because you know we have come to a point where by now we are able to make decisions and say like, for this month, we're not working. Right. We just wanna spend time with families, you know, because it's very important to us, yeah. Mm, it's, it's very, very, very difficult, especially as a mom, you know, being away and, and, and missing out on those important occasions, important moments in your child's life. Um, but what keeps us going is um, the support that we have, you know, and the fact that um, we, we, we speak to our, our kids, you know, and make them understand the kind of job that we do, that it's different, you know, it's not, it's not the same as your friends, where your mom, you know, their moms are always there, right. but also they, they know that, you know, with the kind of work that we do, we're able to give them the best, you know, from best education to the things that they want that the other kids can have, you know. So we try and make them understand that we're working this hard because we want to give them the best in life, right. you know. Um, but, but also, you know, it's important that, um, that um, we, 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 we create time, like Theo said, we create time and say, you know, we're not going to take shows for a month or two months and that's the time we're going to spend with our families because some, some of the times you are away for like a month and you're touring and, you know, you're not at home. Um, but also having partners that understand, you know, um, the kind of job that we do and, and that are very supportive. Also having like a family because it's not just you and your husband and the kids, but it's also about the extended family right. as well. Having the support of the extended family is very <coughs> important. Um, yeah, so I think that's what, you know, that's what um, also kind of takes the guilt, lowers the guilt when we go. Okay, I must say congratulations. You are among the first personalities in EVIP Africa. 
That must have been awesome to do. It was, uh, <laughs> it was amazing. It was amazing, unbelievable. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's these the, those kind of opportunities that keep coming. It, just at the time when you think, oh, what's next? Mm -hmm. What am I going to do now? You know, and this kind of, those kind of opportunities just pop up. Um, it was amazing doing the interview. I mean, one of the biggest channels in the, in the, in the world. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, to be recognized in that level. I think also it's after all of the, um, you know, um, international uh, recognition that we got when we got nominated for the BETs. Mm -hmm. And recently, um, we, we, our, our, work is is being placed at the grammy museum which is oh, amazing which is quite big and uh yeah we're just hoping maybe next we'll hold a grammy in our hand we're, we're getting there we're getting yeah there. i think we're you're going there. to do that soon and we'll be we're very excited there. when that happens <laughs> to you guys finally you've also had some tragedy in the band i think you were all involved in an accident not too long ago you lost one of your band members how has that kind of informed your act and your personalities um i would say you know we had to go through a lot of things, you know, before we became where we are today. Um, having been on an accident and also losing a member, uh, because, you know, for those who don't know, Mafiki Zolo started out as, as, as a three, you know, uh, uh, band members, you know. Um, um, another guy's uh, his name who passed on, his name was Debo Ho. So it was, you know, a group made of two guys, one girl, and we lost a brother, you know. And it wasn't very easy because, you know, as we're talking now, you would have been, you know, seated on another, mm -hmm. you know, just next to us or next to Atlanta or somewhere there. So it's, it's, it's even when we are achieving this dream and we are achieving, you know, we wish that you could be here to see, you know, finally, you know, this, his group making it, you know, um, um, all of us achieving this dream, you know, traveling, going international, winning awards and everything. You, you could have been here as well. But, um, you know, somehow we believe that he, he sees this and, and, and is very, you know, excited that, you know, the band has made it, you know. Right. Uh, but we went through those challenges and, and, and through, you know, um, our support of our families. And because we people who are born again Christian, who love the Lord so much, we believe that, you know, God was preparing us for something big, you know. We might have lost, you know, um, one member and we might have gone through what we've gone through, you know, because they say that gold before, you know, you can have gold, it has to go through fire, you know. So we have to go through all the storms, you know, so, uh, for, for Mafi Zolo to be where it is today, you know. So now we, we've got character, you know, we, we, we are strong. And um, we have the support not only of our families, but uh, support is, uh, support from our uh, record companies, and for the whole continent. You know, um, they understand our story; they are fully behind us, and uh, we are very, very grateful for that. Yeah. Right. You want to add anything? Um, I would just say it's, it's it's always difficult, you know, um, losing a member because we are one family. You know, it's like losing a brother, and. Um, like Theo said, we believe that some of the things that we go through, you know, some of the painful things that we go through, um, it's actually to make us stronger, you know, stronger people. And um, yeah, and, and I mean, it's not only that, also going through the, 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 the car accident as well. Um, but, you know, we are the people that we are today because of that, you know, um, it, it builds us into the characters that we are, strong characters that we are today. Right. Yeah. Um, finally, you know when somebody comes here wearing um, glasses, people are like, what, is her eye, what do her eyes look like? <laughs> so we're all very curious. Uh, my eyes are very red. <laughs> you just got off a flight, <laughs> they will understand. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness, okay. Look at that. reveal. So much pretty <laughs> without the glasses. Yeah, he, he wanted that for himself. I don't think yeah, it's just for the viewers. It's just, about just for the audience. Yeah, no, no. It is about the audience. <laughs> this is what I do here. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for being You're here. Welcome. You're welcome. By the time you watch this, they will have performed at the Koroga Festival and they will have killed it, as always. Yeah. Come back to Nairobi soon. Buy the albums. You've got what, seven, eight albums now? Yeah, eight albums now. Um, yeah. You know, all of our music, I'm all of our collections. People. Yeah, and I want to, we want to say we've, we've, we're celebrating our 20 years next year, next year being wow. together. So it's been 19 years being together. So next year we're celebrating us, you know, being 20 years in the game and still going strong.
and still going strong and still yeah. putting out great music. <laughs> We're very proud of you guys. We love your music. Thank, Thank you, you so man. much for being here in Nairobi. Come back and do a 20-year tour across the continent and perform Definitely. in Nairobi. Definitely. Exactly. That's the plan. <laughs>